keep that in mind. Colossians 1, 15. He is the image. I just love Colossians because it's so theological and it's, it's so esoteric. It gives just so much wonderful, powerful visions of the resurrected, risen Christ. And he is the image, verse 15, of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, where the thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled that in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven for which I, Paul, became a minister. Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Bless and minister and bring anointing and peace, power to your people in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I, I want to preach a message today on being a real Christian. We could title it, Will the Real Christian Please Stand Up? <laughs> So many today claim to know him, and yet so few really know him. So many have his name, but not his nature. So many have his name, but not his nature. And I want us to know three things today that the Holy Spirit would give to every one of us that will identify us with Jesus Christ fully and completely. It will help you to understand that if you have these three things in your life, that you really do belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're in a day of, of departing from the faith. We're in a day when people are letting down the standard. We're in a day when acceptance is the word and tolerance is the virtue that people are talking about. And really what they're doing is just tolerating sin and calling it virtue, but it's not. And I want us to be able to identify fully with the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want to be a Christian in name only. I want to have the nature of Jesus. How about you? I want to stand before God someday and hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. How many of you want to be an, a real Christian? I want to hear him say, Well done. I don't want to praise him with my lips, but his heart be far from me. That's what Jesus said about the, so many people. They praise me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. The Bible also says that not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, is going to enter in, but he that does the will of God. I thought about it like this. You know, a lot of people are like uh, Christians. A lot of Christians are like policemen. They wear the clothes, but they have no badge. And, you know, if you wear the clothes on the outward, you know, extemporaneous view, you look like a policeman. But until you show the badge, you can't prove that who you really are. And the badge for the Christian is these three natures that the Lord wants us to all have in our lives. These things will prove to the devil, to the world, and to the church that we really do belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. These three things show our badge about who we really are. Our authenticity as Christians and our significance with God is tied up in number one. Everybody say number one. I got three points this morning. I'm going to give you all three. Number one is that we are suffering with Christ. We're to be identified by our suffering. Amen. Amen. Jesse, my son-in-law, told me a joke one time. He said, have you ever heard of the three rings of marriage? And I said, no. He said, there's the engagement ring, the wedding ring, and the suffering. But, but suffering is a part, a legitimate part of being identified with the Lord Jesus Christ. We enter into his suffering, not our own. 
We're not suffering because we're evildoers. We're suffering because we're doing right. If you're suffering today and if the devil has shot fiery darts at you this week, it's not because you're wrong, it's because you're right. We need to understand that if we really belong to Jesus, we're going to suffer for Christ. That's part of it. That's part of the package. Jesus said, you want to follow me? Count the cost. Take up your cross and follow me. And people today enter into a contract with God for blessing but not suffering. And they don't last very long. Look at people that come in and they get saved and they feel joy and they feel peace and they feel love and they think, whoo, this is wonderful. I'm just going to go to heaven on a cloud. And about the third week of their new salvation walk, the devil hits them upside the head with a two before and the washing machine breaks and the things start going wrong and they start coming under attack and it isn't long until they bail out because they didn't have a proper understanding that really our identifying with Jesus Christ is that we not only identify with his glory but we are willing to identify with his suffering we are willing to bear a cross we're willing to bear reproach for his name's sake he said you shall be hated of all men for my sake and I want you to understand that there is a growing sentiment in America there is a growing spiritual darkness in America of anti-Christian spirit of anti the, 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 the world looks upon us as extreme they look upon us as, as, as crazy they look upon us as scary. Something's wrong with us. They look upon us as extreme because we are identified with the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is a spirit of that. I don't know if the Lord will allow it to become full-fledged tribulation or not, or if he's going to call the church out before. But I do know that everyone who lives godly in Christ Jesus will suffer some kind of persecution. So if you're under attack from the devil, pick up your head, square your shoulders, and come out swinging. God is on your side and you're not suffering anything that nobody else in this church is not suffering. We all go through battles. We all have times of struggle. We're all having to bear our cross. We're all pushed down with trials and tests. But lift up your head and rejoice today because you are identified as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. His stamp is upon your head. His spirit is upon your heart. And you're walking in the path of righteousness. And if as you walk with that, the devil hates you, he is maniacal in his hatred. He will turn against you with everything he's got. But pick up your head and rejoice. Somebody say amen. 1 Peter 3.14 says, If you suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. Hallelujah. Turn to two people now and tell them you're blessed. Hallelujah. You've gone through something, then you're blessed. Count it all joy, my brethren, when you fall into divers' temptations. Count it all joy because you're being identified with the Lord Jesus Christ. Learn how to rejoice in the middle of it. Learn how to enjoy it while you're waiting on your breakthrough. Amen. 1 Peter 5.10 says, After you've suffered for a while, your suffering will perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. There's something positive that comes out of every attack from the devil. It makes me more determined. It gives me more strength. It establishes my, my relationship with the Lord. My love grows stronger. Hallelujah. I'm not about to give up. I'm going to go forward. And folks, I want you to understand that suffering is a part of being identified with Jesus. Christ. If you're not suffering then you're on the wrong team. But if you're suffering you're on the right side. Hallelujah! I spent uh, a week over in Kauai and, and uh, I passed by a tent that was set up where a uh, church has been planted and it said Mike French, evangelist all week. And uh, my wife we're friends of theirs. In fact Mike has preached in this church before. So I had lunch with him one day. And as we're talking he does extensive work in planting churches in Russia. He's over there 10 or 12 times in a year and has seen, you know, over 1,200 churches established in Russia. He said, but the tide is turning in Russia very quickly. Darkening clouds are coming. Putin is putting pressure upon the churches. And even though they're planting as fast as they can and the church is still growing, there is coming more and more threats, more and more jails, more and more imprisonment. He said the head of the church over there that he works with, uh, which has hundreds of churches under him, he's been in jail seven times and has been beaten and interrogated in hell for months. And uh, he said, while I was there, he was just there last month, he said they don't have the KGB anymore. They renamed it the FSB. And he said they were sitting out in a van taking uh, a video of people that came in the church. 
He said the pastor is absolutely fearless. He said he walked outside, tapped on the door and said, Hey guys, come on out of the van. You don't need to sit out there. He said, Come on in and sit on the front row and take a picture. He said, This is my American evangelist friend. He's going to be preaching. Just go ahead and film the whole service. And, and the FSB told French, said, you're not coming back. We're not going to let you in with a visa anymore. So he said, I guess my trips to Russia have been canceled because this pastor was so bold. And he said, I said to him, why did you do that? He said, I just wanted to see where your faith was. He said, I just wanted to see if you had any fear or not. He said, I just wanted to see if you're on the same page as the church in Russia is. He said, I want to tell you something, Brother French. I am not afraid of these people. I'm not afraid of the KGB, the FSB, or the government, or Putin himself. He said, because I serve a higher power and a higher God. And he has changed me from the shoelaces to the top of my head. He has given me a new life. And he said to me, Mike French said to me, he said, you see, the church in Russia is fearless because they have already settled the fact that whatever they have to do, they're going to serve the Lord. Throw us in prison. We'll still serve God with joy. Kill us. It doesn't matter. We We've already settled the issue. It's time, high time, for the church in America to come to a place that we settle the issue. I'm going to serve the Lord. I don't care what I have to go through. I don't care how many reverses the devil throws in my path. I don't care how many fiery darts the devil gives. I'm going to serve the Lord with joy. I'm going to be in church next Sunday and the next Sunday and the next Sunday. I'm going to pay my tithes. I'm going to walk with God. I'm I'm going to keep reading my Bible. I'm going to keep walking with God. We need to settle some things. Somebody say amen. We've been far too long, you know, pampered and petted and made to feel comfortable. We've been, we've been bloated because we've been fed so much. We, we, we've been pampered. I can tell you it's time for the church in America to strengthen herself and say, I'm ready for suffering. I'm ready for jail. I'm ready for imprisonment. I would lay down my life for the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what God is calling us to and that's where we better go somebody say amen instead of saying oh they didn't shake my hand oh this one didn't come through for me that that failed me there and getting our feelings hurt we got to grow beyond that and get to a place where we're willing to lay down our lives for the gospel somebody say amen Mike French told me he said they're fearless over there they're not afraid of anybody because they know in whom they have believed and they have settled some things Turn to somebody and look right now and tell them, settle it with God. Come on, settle it with God. I'm willing to go through whatever I have to go through, but I'm going to stay true to God. Somebody say amen. amen. And rejoice in the fact that you've been made a sufferer with Jesus. Rejoice when they, when they uh, persecute you and say all manner of evil against you. Our Sunday school teacher today taught an excellent lesson, talked about getting cussed out this week. And, and talked mean to by a 20-year-old, you know. And she's not 20 anymore. She has seniority. And she could have very easily turned the tables on this person. But she said, I was amazed at how calm and how peaceful I was. In other words, how much like Jesus she turned out to be. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Somebody say, man. Well, when is that person going to quit Causing me problems. Whenever you start reacting like Jesus would react, then God will move them. Somebody say praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I heard John Hagee say, whatever man needs to get ahead is a powerful enemy. And I believe it. That's why Paul said we rejoice in all of our tribulation. And he called his affliction light affliction. Works for us a far more exceeding eternal weight in glory. Can I hear an amen? amen? So are you identified as a Christian today? Amen. How many of you suffered in some way? Come on. I know we don't have much. I know we can't even call what we're going through suffering really. But, you know, happy are you? Happy are you? You're identified with Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. I was on an airplane a few months ago and I sat down beside this guy and he said, what's that you're reading? I said, it's a Bible. He said, ooh. He said, what are you, some kind of Christian? I said, yeah, I am a Christian. I'm more than that. I'm a pastor. He said, really? He said, you're not one of those tongue-talking people, are you? (laughs) 
I said, yes, I am, as a matter of fact. I felt like saying, you want me to show you how to do it? I can do something for you now. When are we going to stand up for the Lord? Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. When are we going to get bold? Amen. Hallelujah. I remember years and years and years ago when I first started pastoring this church as a young man that got saved, filled the Holy Ghost. He was so bubbling over, so happy in the Lord. After church, we all went out to a restaurant, a whole bunch of the youth and different ones. And uh, came time to pray. And this kid was just full of the Holy Ghost. And I said, son, why don't you pray for us? I wasn't ready for what he was going to do. He stood up and took a water glass and took a thing and hit against it, a knife and clang, 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 clang. He said, everybody attention please, attention. <laughs> attention. Everybody, everybody in the restaurant he said, uh, we're Christians over here and we're going to pray over our food. Can we have a little reverence? <laughs> I looked at the youth. Some of them were red in the face. Some of them were looking down. Some of them were looking at the menus. And he prays this loud prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, you saved me and redeemed me from hell. And my name is written in the last book of life. Thank you for what you mean to me tonight. Thank you for these youth that are here, this pastor. Thank you, Lord, I love you. And bless this food, by the way. He got so caught up, he almost forgot to bless the food. And he sat down. And I said, that's a proper way to pray over the food. Come on. Not like some of you. You don't pray at all. Oh, I forgot. Now you're on your french fries. <laughs> or you know how some of you are. You're secret Christians. You're going to pray. Thank you, Lord, for this food. We're not sure if you wiped your face or you prayed. We're not really sure. Which one is it? Come on, folks. We've got to get beyond this stuff. God doesn't want secret Christians. God wants people that are full of boldness. Amen. You say, well, you don't want to be a fool. You don't want somebody to cuss you out in a restaurant. I don't know. Sometimes God tells us to be bold. There's nothing wrong with standing for the right. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Suffering, number two, is intercession. How do we know we really belong to Jesus? The Bible says when Zion travails, sons and daughters are born into the kingdom of God. Folks, this is the role of Jesus today as he sits at the right hand of the Father. The Bible says he ever lives to make intercessions. Hebrews 7.22, you enter into his intercession, your heart. He is able to save those to the uttermost who come to God through him since he ever lives to make intercession for them. Amen. When Zion travails, sons and daughters are born into the kingdom of God. This is how we know we really belong to the Lord, is we have gone beyond the place of just petitioning God for ourselves, and we become intercessors in the hands of Jesus Christ, tools that will change the destiny and eternity of people all around us. If you could see how powerful your prayer is, even casual prayer, even intermittent prayer, even five-minute prayers... They all matter to God. They all matter. They all are important. They all have weight. They all have eternity in them. Can I hear an amen? amen. You don't have to get down with headphones and, and get in a proper position and get your Bible open and have Kleenex there. Just, just pray to God when you're driving your car. Learn to communicate to God. You can make intercession flying on an airplane. I did it yesterday. You can do whatever God wants you to do because God has called us as his people to turn the tide on darkness and we push back the darkness through the power of prayer. If the prayer is there, the powers of hell are undone. If prayer 
prayer is not there, Satan rules the roost. But whenever we pray, the light pushes the darkness back. He is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he ever lives to make intercession for them. And when you enter into intercession, you become a member of the heart of God. You learn who he is. You learn how he thinks. You learn where his heart is at. You learn to intercede. Can I hear an amen? We were on our...